Hey, beautiful people. Welcome to another mind-blowing episode of Don't Be Afraid podcast. And I am Jamila Oiza Muhammad Jamu. And as always, I have with me Tolu and a, <laughs> and a special guest, a new face in the house, Koka Oluafemi. And I'm going to just... Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Thank you very much. Sorry, I need to stop. I know. I always do this thing and interrupt. Is why do, is it is Koka's surname or Koka first name? Actually, Koka is surname. Okay. Oluafemi is first name. Oh, I didn't. But so the, you're asking why I switched it? Yeah, why do... Do it's actually do for SEO purposes, really, really, because there's a lot of Femi cookers and a lot of Olua Femi cookers. Okay. So by deliberately spelling it Coca Olua Femi, Femi, I can stand out, especially when I like do stuff, you know, um, and get referenced to what I actually put out. Okay. All right. So then, do you still just do it as? Do you put it out as Coca, as in just Coca, or you put it as Coca Olua Femi? Coca Olua Femi. Okay. But well, my friends call me Femi. A lot of people call me Coca. Okay, all right. It's interesting. No, that's that idea of, yeah, no, but just the, the, that thing of the fact that the digital yeah. life has transformed into that thing about, you know, um, it's interesting. It's interesting because you also get up with people who, like I always start thinking of like, you know the guy, um, influencers who, when th I think when they were first breaking out, gave themselves a name like um, Shop Guy. Mm -hmm. And then what do you call it? Does that becomes their name as opposed to Tolu? What you call it, but the brand becomes it's like um, Mr. Mr. Macaroni. Yes, that's the brand now, as opposed to the actual name of the person. I don't think people ever know their real names. It's interesting. Sorry, so I interrupted you. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Okay, all right. So, a short bio of Mr. Koka. Koka Oluwafemi is a creative technologist known for his expertise in design, research, strategy, and technology. As the creative director of Cocards Agency, he leads the creation of exceptional digital experiences and high quality brands. Koka is also the co-founder of Curated Creatives, a platform that brings together the Nigerian creative industry for networking and growth. With a diverse range of interests, including astrophysics and philosophy, Koka brings a unique perspective to his work. As a regional ambassador for Product Hunt, he is passionate about finding and highlighting the best tools Koka Oluwafemi is dedicated to making a positive impact and fostering meaningful connections in the world of creative technology. Woo! Yeah, half I'm, a, right? I'm a generalist. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but, I'm a very big generalist. But a generalist in regards to creative. Yeah, we respect creative. With creative and technology. That's I mean, cool stuff. Yes, in terms of my career, I'm focused on creative technology, but um, it, I'm just curious okay. you know, also because, I mean, astrophysics, there's a lot of things that I, I am very interested in. Yeah. Well, welcome to uh, SIDS and on today's episode, oh, before I even actually go in, it is a good day to remind you people to follow us on our social media pages, on Instagram and on Twitter, DBA underscore podcast and whatever platform you listen to, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, don't forget to listen to Don't Be Afraid Podcast every day. Well, if not every day, but at least, but just listen, you know. So on today's episode, we'll be talking about the future of AI and its potential to transform the society. But actually, I think we should, I don't know, okay, I don't want to clap, but you guys, Chat GPT app is now in Nigeria, the first Ooh. African country to, woo, proud yeah, Nigerian no, moment. It yeah, it is. Sorry, don't buy it. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Alex, um. Why are we clapping? Sorry, I mean, what's... The what's first so Nigerian... The first African country. Yeah, first African yeah. country. And so. And so. I think it's a pretty big deal. Yeah, I, I, do I think mean. That, I, I think that we need this um, because, <laughs> you know, this has a very... AI has... You know, AI is not like many other technologies that people actually look at. Mm -hmm. AI actually works. AI is intelligent. That intelligence part is not... Maybe it might be intelligence. It's actually intelligence. intelligence. Right? It can actually give you leverage. You can. So it's not It's not one of these technologies that might change the world. It is changing, changing the, world. the world. It's very revolutionary. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't take that back. Mm -hmm. You know, you yes, can't give yeah. everybody in the world intelligence and Nigeria is actually shut out. Mm -hmm. You know, we need this competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So I'm ha actually happy that it's in Nigeria. And that we get to leverage on it. I mean, I'm not being a hater. I'm not, yeah. as in, no. I, I mean, let me Sounds be like you are. No, I understand <laughs> that. That's just, which is why, which I, so I thought I'd clarify it. Yeah. Is this is that, and maybe I explain it a bit more, which is this is that 
I think it's a great thing that um, I, 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 buy, I buy into the power of AI. I definitely do. What I am not, why I'm not applauding is that thing of the fact that maybe, maybe because I could always access it maybe yeah. on online. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. it's great that, okay, maybe because I haven't got the app or I haven't downloaded the app and I couldn't, but I could always access it online. Yeah. And the mere fact that it's chat GPT and it's Nigeria does not, for me, mean anything unless we're doing something with it. I'm also of that belief that um, when I see a report about a Yahoo boy, that's a Yahoo boy doing what he's doing. It's nothing. It's not reflecting on me. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. And I flip it around and go, then I shouldn't be applauding purely because, you know, um, there's a Nigerian that does something. Do you do I understand? So that my thing about is about taking the good and the bad. If I'm going to take the good. I must be ready to take the bad. And I just prefer to be as an individual. Just do you understand? So yeah. it's great that the things there. Maybe because I said because I've been ab- I've been o- I've been able to access it. Yes online and not and so i'm also going to ask you that what's the advantage of it being on the app is that because why so because that because it's it's, it's opening universally to people mm-hmm. online isn't it yes, yes, yes yeah so it's great that they've done it and i know which is actually part of the reason why we got you which is why part of the reason why i wanted to wanted to have this conversation was mm-hmm. um Sam Oldman. Oldman. Sam Oldman. God, I was about to say Sam Peckham or Sam <laughs> Peckham. Thank God. For yeah. Yeah. Was here. Yeah, he was. Now that I, I'm going to be honest, when I heard about that, a big part of me was jealous that I wasn't Aww. there for the event. I was. It was because I still remember when, and I and this is name dropping. I remember when Jack Dorsey came from yes. Twitter, and it was a big thing about the fact that some people are going to go there and meet him, and I had my picture taken next to him and all that kind <laughs> of stuff. Yeah. And I just sort of thought, well, oh, hang on a second, this guy was here, and I didn't even hear about it, but you attended. Yes, that was I fantastic. Mm-hmm. What was yeah. it like? What was it about? What was it about? I mean, it was fantastic. Um, I, I, Sam Osman came, um, basically laid out that the reason why he came was because Nigeria is, uh, I mean, the largest African user of ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Um, so I think he's very data-driven, um, the decisions that he made um, with respect to, like, you know, this, are, this is the largest country in Africa using this product. And this um, there's a lot of potential, you know, in making sure that, like, you know, something happens, you know, as a result of this. So Mm -hmm. I think he came because of that. Um, You know, a lot of people were there, people from creative, the creative industries, people from tech, you know, um, a lot of... What was um, was the event? What was the event? Because I didn't even hear about it. And and I'm supposed to be... I mean, it's supposed to be uh, um, digital. And so that was another (laughs) part of the big kick for me. was like, God, man, I'm I'm out of the loop. What what was the event? What was it? What was it? I mean, the event was basically a question and answer. Okay. It was a chance for the community, the Nigerian tech and creative community, yeah. to ask questions and to understand, you know, the implications and the impact and the opportunities of this technology. Um, so Sam basically was there to answer many of those questions. It was also moderated by Fulisha Badi Masi, I think, um, you know, who also asked a lot of very critical questions. I think, you know, very importantly, the questions that were asked and the answers, you know, that were given, you know, were very, very revealing. And I especially like how, you know, it went because there was this sense of honesty, all right, that you could see, you know, it, it was just, there were, there, were, there were answers that were like, I don't know, okay. I need to work on this. <laughs> all right, right? okay. Or this okay. is a, an issue. But, okay. you know, I think all in all, it was very um, open. You yeah. Know? A lot of people got to ask questions and answer them. Yeah. All right. And you got to answer them. Okay. What was the most, if there was, was there anything that was most revealing for you? What was the... Well, yeah, that is there anything, was there anything that stuck in mind when you walked? Came out, or what, okay, no, let me yeah, let me ask that. Was there what was the most revealing thing for you, or what was your question? What was the question you were dying to ask him? Hmm. Okay, yeah. So the question that I, I was dying to ask him, uh, which I didn't get to ask, I was going to ask that. Did yeah, you get to I, ask I didn't get to ask it, But um, I mean, I was gonna ask that, or I wanted to ask that, um, with you know. In artificial intelligence, intelligence is great. It's really great. But it's not enough, especially for Nigeria. There are still some hurdles that we need to scale, right? Infrastructural problems. Mm-hmm. There are, like, real, you know, things that doesn't make it competitive. It doesn't make it level playing field for everyone. Mm-hmm. Nigeria has hurdles that, you know... So if you give everybody AI and you say do what you can do with AI, AI. some people can still do more. Right. Some people have internet. Some people have, you know. So I wanted to ask what we, um, you know, um, um, OpenAI was going to plan to support 
you know, and mm -hmm. you know, at least make it some level playing field, you know, in some way. Because I think it's on them to make that le um, playing field level. Yeah. Oh, really? Because of how ch game changing it? it is. Because of how game changing, like this is a revolutionary technology. It's very revolutionary, and the consequences, you know, are. I mean, it's just. Yeah. But, but isn't it, I mean, sorry, because there are two things there. We had a conversation earlier on with somebody who was talking about, and um, she was talking about going to classrooms to teach. Classrooms, um, this is even the federal capital in Abuja, yeah. to teach students, secondary stu school students, about tech. And they went, they went there and then realized they didn't, the, school the school wasn't even on the electricity grid. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Thank you. So when you talk about, about hurdles, I understand that. Yeah. And that they've had to go back to creating cards, physical cards to teach the students. And so, yes, that's a big thing for me. And that thing about, about the competing, about, you know, that there are lots of hurdles. But I'm also a believer in that thing of that there is, n is we can dream. Yes. We should be able to dream. And I remember... As um, I always remember this thing about um, once going to a friend, a friend was a writer, and we went to, um, I went to something, some reading she was doing, and people were talking about black writing. I kept thinking in my mind, but that doesn't. Why does? Why is the color that what defines it? She, I mean, she, you can be a, you could be a horror writer, you could be a fiction, you can be science fiction. Non fiction. Why is it that you must define it by that? So to bring it back to this, that it's that. Yes, we have we have obstacles and all that kind of stuff, but we should dream. We can, we can, there's no reason why we can't create Dream. the next, I'm uh, sorry, the next Uber. There's no yes. reason why we can't create the next um, Airbnb. But my worry is that in our, in that focus on the hurdles that we have, what we, what, what we will create is the next, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, playing card. Or whatever it is, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Which is, and so that also then leads into my thing about, but isn't it op isn't it on us? incumbent on us. on us rather than the open open AI to solve it for us? Isn't it? I mean, just like I mean, you know, and I'm really curious to find out your journey to get to where you are. You know what you've had to, how you've had to yeah. teach yourself. Yeah. And isn't that? I mean, like I think that makes us stronger. Yeah. So, so for one, I think that you know, from the very first moment when. I tested out ChatGPT. I knew that this was game changing, mm, right? I'm because going. for one, <laughs> right, for one, it has solved a problem that we've not been able to solve so. for a long time, which is translation, right? When you think about translation and the meaning of translation, right, the fact that you know many school students, many primary school students, secondary school students, you know, my ha you, you have these libraries of science books. Yeah. Right, or tech books that are very hard to understand, understand. very hard to break down. Whether yeah. it's translation to pidgin, whether it's translation to Nigerian English, whether it's just translation to break it down to a simpler, simpler terms. way. Right? We now have this ability to translate all of what we can feed into this thing to make it easier for us to actually get educated. So mm -hmm. for me, that is very, very game changing. Mm -hmm. Whether or not OpenAI gives us infrastructure or supports us in any other way, I think that that has happened. It's not something that it's, it's just now we need to find opportunities, find ways. And, and this translation, whether it's digital, whether, you know, we, we, can, use, we can translate stuff and actually print it, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And people can read that. Like, yeah. So without the um, infrastructure, it doesn't mean that it cannot actually create real possibilities for us. Yeah. So I'm very, very, um, I'm very excited about what this means and how people would actually use it, um, you know, but yeah. Are you afraid at all? Because I mean, no, no, <laughs> no, no, because it's, no, it's I mean, it's, no, you can't. I Don't mean, be afraid. I I mean, right? No, I you think, know. Yeah, and uh, look, yeah. I, I think it's the. I mean, look, you can't get away with from the conversation you have on AI right now. Yeah. In the, it's very divisive. I mean, you've got the one camp that's sort of saying about how wonderful it is. Yeah. The other camp that's saying, look, this is the end of the world. Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. It's going but to destroy you. Yeah. Exactly. And that you know that kind I of stuff. I, I saw one article that said it was going that um it, it was going to the former the former ceo of google said that ai is going to destroy us and i'm like wow. no i think that was yeah that was clickbait the guy yeah. was talking about the fact no, actually, is, it the guy, is, it, is it the guy who resigned from google yeah yeah no it wasn't the ceo he was one of the guys one of the heads of the yeah. ai thing oh yeah. yeah but when you went when you then read through it what he was saying was about he was stepping away not because he was going to create it was about the need to find 
the, the, the power of it and the need mm -hmm. to regulate it yeah. or to find ways of regulating it. And that's it. And so, yeah, which is, why, which is what I mean about how divisive yeah. it is yeah. and that the, the media is spending, sp spending things, sorry. But that's it. So it's, this is like, you talk about how exciting it is. I mean, but somebody, who it's says the translation is right? So actually, where, where I'm going to land on now is, is what I'm still trying to figure out because I think that that's where the issue is. AI is not bad, right? It's human actors who use these things unethically. That's where the problem is. Preach. Is that, is that what you guys, young guys say? Yeah. Or whatever it is in Preach. Yeah. Word, so word, 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 yeah, word. You know, word, yeah. when you think about, I mean, I, I don't know if you heard about the whole scandal of, um, was it stable diffusion and mid journey stealing artist images and all that? There was a time no, where like, you know that was um, very prominent in like the AI space. You know, stealing so in what sense? Sorry, so tell, tell yeah, us a bit more. Sorry. So stealing in the sense that um, you have um, artists who have mm -hmm. perfected their work. They've used years to train themselves. You know, but now you can say, "I want this image in the style of Pablo Picasso," Oops. and it's not Pablo Picasso, but it gives you exactly similar. What, you know, it's similar. And yeah, you might say that's great for like Pablo Picasso is dead, right? But they are living artists who cannot even. They see their work out there, you they know, but they cannot, it. you know, so it's trained on their work. Yeah. But, but I feel now, like there would be a difference. Yeah. If, even if you, you create it to, to be so, so similar, there would be something very distinctive that would be very different. I mean, it's I don't doubt No, but it's not coming to their work. It's coming yeah. to, be in, to be in the style of their work, isn't yes, it? Yes, in the style okay. of their work, yeah. yes. But, but the, the issue there is that this technology, if the companies that, if Stable Diffusion and Midjourney, right, right, if they didn't scrape the internet, to pick out living artist works, mm -hmm. right? The technology will still be the technology. Mm -hmm. The technology will be still be able to do everything it can do. Exactly. So this is an issue of ethics. Y and you see all time, um, you see other guys who basically did that without taking people's work, mm -hmm. right? It can still do all of what it can do, but it they don't have that moral, ethical dilemma ethical ethical. because they went through um, the proper processes. Mm -hmm. So I, I do think that we just need more oversight, right? In terms of like ethics, in terms of how people actually go about, um, you know, using using it. work, you know, doing. I, I don't know. People just need to be more ethical, right? Yeah. Because this is amplified when you then train an AI, you know, on top of a very shaky foundation. Mm -hmm. You know. Oh yeah, no, I I, I mean I'm, I'm I'm very much I, I mean it calls to all this. I mean you talk about philosophy as well. Yeah. That mm -hmm. again, that idea of like a human's evil. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, not yeah. tech, but it is. Is that is somebody was saying earlier on about that idea that being that if you're a bad person, being online just helps you amplif amplify it. It's not. It just brings out the truth in you. And that mm -hmm. that kind that kind of thing. Yes. So yeah, that's that's the question around that thing of, you know, I still. I mean, I agree with you about the ethical ethics of it. I agree with you. I think that, and uh, I'm not being a conspiracy conspiracy theorist or whatever it is. I think we haven't even known what what they can do with it. I fear what the governments and what the, what you call it, because somebody once People. said that the next, wor the next world war isn't gonna be, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be online. It's <laughs> true, yeah. it's gonna be so online. True. So, you know, from even, yes, we've heard about Cambridge Analytica and all that kind of stuff and, and about the manipulation, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is, and you talk about deep fakes and et cetera. And it is, it's that question of like, listen, look, is there, the need for people to be ethical, let alone what governments are going to do with it. Yeah. You know that idea and that ability to do stuff, and I, and it is. It's a very. You need it's to a read stuff. Exactly, and it and it is. It's it's. Yeah. It's awe inspiring, in in being really exciting, yeah. but also awe inspiring and being frightening as well as the fact that, yes. that. But I agree with you, which is this is like, we can't close the door. I actually want to pose a question because I think this is where. This is what we need to think about, but this is also, I think it's scary to think about this. Um, and it's the issue of AGI, mm -hmm. um, artificial general intelligence. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember when um, I, I was watching this interview from Elon Musk, and they were asking him about you know, technologies that he had seen that you know, actually shocked him. And he mentioned DeepMind, which is actually a company that he has invested in. But when <laughs> you look at DeepMind's mission, right? DeepMind's mission is to actually create an AGI. And when you look at the definition of AGI, they, they want to create a system or a, a, an entity that is more intelligent than the collective humanity. So their mission is, at the end of this project, 
we're going to come up with a an intelligence mm -hmm. that is more intelligent than everybody in the world put together. Do you think that's possible, though? It is possible. I I I, 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 I see. I don't feel like it's possible because I I okay. I mean it's it's tech and the people behind it are humans. Mm -hmm. They're making use of their brains. Yes. If you can do something like that, you cannot create something that will be much more intelligent than you. I I so th there is there is reason why I think that that might be possible. I don't know if it's possible because it hasn't been done yet. Mm. But I'll say might Endless be crossed. possible. Yeah. Um. So there's this um theory called um, computational theory of mind. Um, I think it was proposed by um Alan Turing, mm. the guy who literally um came up with like Turing machines which says what um how, how to gauge whether how to gauge intelligence especially from like a computer and machine mm -hmm. right and it looks at how it, it looks at the notion of intelligence mm -hmm. right and how we are um what goes on in our brains so mm -hmm. uh, i'm not really explaining this well but, but how it's uh, what, it, what what it says is that your brain is like a hardware mm -hmm. intelligence is not in your brain it's your brain is just it's just like this you know um, carrier carrier right the same way um in a computer the hardware is not intelligence mm -hmm. something else is going on That's true. right so what is going on right is information processing right the brain is very efficient at processing information, information. and we're building machines that can get smaller that can get much more um so in a way a lot of people believe that this is possible a lot of people are working hard towards this. I mean, the, the the brightest research scientists in the world are all working towards this, you know. Um, so, I mean, I don't know <laughs> what will happen when <laughs> we realize that maybe this might be a possibility. I think, I think sorry, because yeah. what you're talking about the, about the brain being hardware, there's this, I mean, I don't know whether it's Socrates, S Socrates, Socrates, or, thank yeah. you, or Plato that said something about we're all born with that same intelligence. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just that each of us has different triggers mm. that then, you know, open it up. Mm -hmm. And that's so that idea that, listen, look, the brain is a hardware mm -hmm. and it's the input or the trigger the way you use it. You said the processing that, yes. that gives you that thing of, of how, of, of what it is. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I think that's interesting. That is an interesting thing. I think that, I mean, I don't know if you, f if you would finish your question. I mean, did you finish your question? Cause you said you wanted to pose a question. Did you yeah, get yeah. there? So, so my question would be that what will, you know, maybe maybe it's not a question, but it's sort of what I think we need to think around, think about, because it's not like there is one answer. I just think that it's something that we need to be mindful of, especially looking at how, I mean, a lot of people didn't believe that AI was going to get to this point, <laughs> but it did, and it shocked, it took a lot of people by surprise, you know. Yeah, uh, many people believed, actually, that when you have intelligence, right, or when you had AI, yeah. creativity was going to be the last place to touch. You know, other things that are easily automatable, was good. you know, but you saw Dali, you saw Mid Journey. Those mm -hmm. are the first things that, you know, and it was like, what's the notion of creativity? Something that doesn't exist, right? Something that was never put together. I'm going to process it and put it together in a creative way. Yeah. You know, but my challenge to that, and I think, and this is, this is maybe the, the way I have come to terms with the concept of AI yeah. and come to terms with seeing it as a, as a, enabler rather than something to be afraid of i sort of looked at it and think that yes dali came out and stuff but dali did not if dali can um dali did not dali created the image but the create but the image was based on the prompts that somebody put yes. in there that for me is the key thing is the fact that you know um it is we're still it's still it's still based on what we on our creativity on our request, the change, the changes that the the tools for creating it before you'd yes. have taken your hand all of it and done it, this thing is now gone and giving you some options. And it is, it's 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 that sort of like you know, it's a brainstorming thing. Yeah. And it comes to and gives you these options and goes, oh well, I don't know if these. And then okay, you can then go, oh, okay, no, I, I meant this. Yeah. I'll change <laughs> this color. I'll move that. I'll move that. So for me, it's still that. It's still that thing of you know. We are and that's why I said me. Agency. Exactly, yeah. and that maybe that's how I rationalize it to go back and out. And it is because I because because when it first came out, it was that sort of like, my God, jobs are gonna people's jobs and you know that kind of stuff. But then you, but exactly, the job but is a exa exa and all that kind of stuff. But then I then look back and thought, okay, look, wait a second. I don't know if you ever saw it. There was an ad that this guy, um, 
Deadpool. Deadpool. Yeah, Deadpool. Deadpool Ryan, Ryan, uh, Ryan Reynolds, Reynolds. Did, did, did an ad for his um, mobile company, mm-hmm. and he did it. He did it using AI. AI. He said he put in the prompt and said, "Oh, um, write me a write me a script that has a joke that does this and that and that." And it came out and it and it put I put it and he read it, and it sounded really funny. It sounded wow. And I then thought, "Ooh, hang on a second. You think about the amount of you think of social media. You think of the amount of content that is uploaded." Every second of the day, yet less than one percent is viral. Think of everybody that goes to this place and is an actor. Yet, just one percent of them shine through. Footballers, etc. So I was thinking about that, that Ryan Reynolds thing, thinking that is it that the ad was good, or just that the fact that it was written by Ryan, or the fact that it was read by Ryan Reynolds? Do you understand? So it was content. Yeah. Mm. But that again, which again I think is part of my coming to terms about the fact that, listen, look, we still control it. Because if I'd read it, I wouldn't have given the same delivery. And I read something, there's a, there's a, I'm a, and this is showing my age, I'm a Seinfeld fan, and there's a, there's a great scene where um, they have to do a line called, um, these, pres- these pretzels are making me thirsty. And they're four, four main characters. And each, four, each one of them lives in a different way. And it's funny, but it's amazing that when you step back and look at them as actors, the way that that is just copy it's just text but each one of them is interpreted in a different way and that's why that's what I, you know so the daily gives you four different versions and goes mm. oh well i think based yeah. on what you've asked for yeah and then you then you then go there so as i said maybe that's me rationalizing to go oh yeah i don't think the world's dead yet and it is but it is the shifting of it and saying listen look we still we still have control yeah. and that yeah. for me is the that's that that helps me sleep I'll, I'll admit it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because an AI wouldn't wake up and say it doesn't have a motive. Yeah, I mean, it was his motive to ma- make ah, money to seize but, yeah. the railway. I mean, what's but what's if we create deep, yeah. mi- but if but then question about deep mind, yeah. is that what this is that where it will end up? Because 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 when you mention about deep mind thing, I just see it. It's a mission statement. My mission, our mission statement is to be the biggest um, digital company in in Africa mm-hmm. and blah, blah, and the best in the world. It's a mission statement. Yeah. And which is which is great, and it just gives you when you wake up in the morning, you go towards it, and it gives you some, a goal. So that's how I treat that. But if they achieve it, as you said, will it wake up and decide that? Listen, look. So I think that the guardrail for that, you know, it, these research companies, they don't have all of the power. They can create, they can do research and come up with these amazing models that can do incredible things. But AI still needs hardware. I think the companies that. Because hardware is not something that an AI will just make by itself. You look at companies like NVIDIA, mm-hmm. or NVIDIA um, you know, look at those people who actually create the process, and that's not scalable. It's not, um, the AI cannot take control of that, but it needs that. I mean, the AI would need hardware to continue to replicate itself. In any case, it wants to go rogue. So I think that um, that's, you know, yeah, that's how to... Okay, yeah. have you seen, there's a, there's a program, and, I'm go- and I can't remember the bloody name of it. There was a series where it was basically around um oh god I'll, I'll try i'll try and google it in a second where it was around the, the machine taking over and it was and it was almost that idea of the fact that the machine had learned how to hook itself up so that the guardrails that we thought were there it was able to understand and and circumvent it yeah so i i, I mean what you call it? it it's a film yeah, yeah which fine. is it. And we watch it because of the fact that, listen, yeah. it's entertainment. But it is. It's that sort of like, it's still human imagination. And mm-hmm. so whether or not that kind of thing. And I hope so. I do hope that... I don't know if... I mean, when we talk about, you know, like even the deep mind thing, what I, what I sort of look at is think that they say that the human brain, we haven't even started, we haven't even accessed it. Mm-hmm. As humans, <laughs> we don't even access a percentage of it yeah so i'm hoping that maybe the ai that the deep mind will never because we don't even access our full intelligence okay we'll never reach that i, I actually have an answer but i'm going to be paraphrasing someone's answer i'm going to be paraphrasing elon musk answer to the same question <laughs> okay. so they asked him i think the same question that what happens when agi just goes rogue and decides to take over the world and he mentioned that, uh, uh, so let me first of all say, state that Neuralink, 
this company. Um, basically, they just um, got approved for human trials, I think, yesterday. So um, that means that, and if you look at what Neuralink does, Neuralink is basically a interface for the brain. Mm -hmm. All right, it's saying that instead of so, so how they trained it was, you know, the, or how they basically go about this is that they understand what fires in the brain when you do certain things, and then they try to reverse engineer it. So they try and see if they fire those things in your brain. So let's say you, to, if I raise this mic up, yeah. right, there's some parts in my brain that lights up. So when they reverse engineer it and they light those parts in my brain that light up, light my up. hand go up, right? That's the whole point. And that has proven to be successful. They were able to like test it with a monkey, mm -hmm. you know, playing a game and all of that. So now that they're going into human trials, um, what he has said was that the first phase yeah. was going to be um, looking at how they can, you know, get people who maybe lost their limbs or stuff to walk mm -hmm. again, to regain um, parts of their, um, their, their body that they've lost. But now the second part is where the answer is, because he said that um, he is hoping that in the future, if AI goes rogue, you know, humans can just like, I mean, they're already computers, so they'll just, you know, go and fight the AI in this. <laughs> I mean that's that's a very sci-fi ending. Yeah, but it is. It is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, yeah, but it, no, it is. It is, and and it's it's almost it's back to the, you know, that thing of like you know even the people talk about, you know, um, climate change and that belief that listen, look, yes, it's a real thing, but that it's. I mean, the thing was you that said it about our capacity to, yeah. to change, our capacity to get better, and that thing of like listen, look, we will learn it, and so it's we will solve climate change. That there are people that will wake up tomorrow and find a solution to it. Yeah. So yeah, it is, and I th I think that again it's that thing of. I don't know if they are fear mongers because it makes because it, it builds the hype, which feeds back to why I'm not applauding I'm, I'm, not, I'm not applauding for for Chat GPT. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe that it is it's an amazing thing, but I also believe it is hype. Yeah, I mean, mm, there's good is, reason to yeah, actually be. Yeah. Um, there's very very good reason because this is it's not to say that oh because of all these positives. You know, it doesn't have consequences. There are consequences mm -hmm. that can like come from this that we should really, really look out for. That we should make sure consequences that, yeah, like consequences like disinformation, right? You know, the massive amount of disinformation. People, I mean, people just even you can craft something without any real essence, and it's just well written. And people would, you know, I, I've, I've actually seen some some things on Twitter. You know, I've seen even people tr using deep fakes and, and stuff to try and say something that somebody didn't say, but from the standpoint of, say, Putin. So Putin is giving advice to Africa on how they should treat their resources. Obviously, this is not Putin. You know, but there is the there, there, what happens is that with that, and as these tools get better, and you can't distinguish between the real Putin and the deep fake Putin, yeah. you can get very, very um, deceptive. You know, so and I think that those are the areas where regulation has to focus on. That those are the areas where um, you know governance, policy, governments need to come in and say that these are the laws that we are putting on the ground. This yeah. is how we have to vet it and work with these companies to basically ensure it's you yeah. know or, or, or make sure. Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. I think I think that what you call it, it's an interesting one because I think that um, you know deep fakes have always in, always existed. Yeah. <coughs> It's just that we're now more aware of it. I, that's me believing it, which is this, is we've always heard rumors. Yeah. We've heard that Sean Connery was Nigerian, um, <laughs> or that, um, what would you call it, um, Roger Miller was Nigerian. Stories or whatever it is um, that come back, come, come up with, and people always said it, and you know, you've always been able to laugh it off and stuff like that. Yeah, but it's more difficult now. I mean, we had a, a, f a colleague was showing, a friend was showing an, an, um, an image recently, and he was, and was amazing was this was none of us i think he showed it to a few of us none of, and he's sp and none of us were trying to figure out whether it was real or not somebody said oh no no it's fake and then why he said oh it's got seven fingers none of us had noticed <laughs> that <laughs> wow. even the person who even the person who had shown it hadn't noticed that and it is Explain and it was it like yeah you know it was that kind mm -hmm. of interesting thing about the fact that you know you know there is it's it's it existed it's existed and all that kind of stuff but <laughs> so no, I mean my thing about about the why I say that it's hype and I think it's a great thing. I mean I, I, I'm excited by technology. Yeah. I'm excited by the, I'm, ex I'm excited about the prospect of it, and I think that I'm excited by the conversations that we need to have around it. Yeah. I think you're right about that thing of like, listen, look, you can't close the door. Yeah. You can't bury your head in the sand and 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 assume that it's not. It exists, yeah. and unless you 
wake up to it and find a way and come to terms with it, you, you, you're going to be left behind. A couple of months ago, I was hearing somebody talking about, um, speaking to, and talking about a prompt engineer. I'd never heard of that. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, sorry, I'm, I'm, I mean, would you call it? I have grey hairs and stuff, and I still remember, you know, the p people now who have whose job title is content creator. Years ago, they, 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 what were you okay, doing? So like you, which, one's, which, one, which one is that one? <laughs> and now we've got prompt engineer, and so that is just the nice about the evolution of life. Yeah. So I'm, r I am excited by it. I think that. Again, in that sort of be afraid, don't be afraid. I think that being aware of it yeah. is a great thing, I and agree. then looking at it and stuff and understanding it is, you know, yeah. So I'm excited by it. I don't want to. It's not that it's not fear mongering about that sort of thing, but I think it's still that sort of, yeah. Where where is it going to go to? Where is it going to go to? Yeah. So I th I think because we live in the age of technology, I mean, when you try and define the century, the age that we are in. We're in the age of science and technology. Yeah. I think it's just very obvious that technology is going to actually play a huge role in our lives. Yeah. You know, and it's something that we need to pay attention to. And not just AI. AI is just one technology. One of the there many. There's going to be tons of technology. I mean, as a matter of fact, I think we're going to get into an accelerated pace of just you know transformative technologies that will affect our lives. So um, I think everybody should be a technologist. I mean, w the one or thing have that basic knowledge yeah, the, the one thing that at least I I, I think I see now mm -hmm. is that AI is AI is going into every industry. Yeah, it might look like it's taking everybody's jobs, but I don't think so. I think it's just giving people new tools. But it's in fashion, it's in food, it's in banking, it's in creativity, it's in social media. You know, no. like and it's unifying all industries. No, I've got to, I mean, because I I'm going to come back to you with a question, but I want yeah, some to so, some months back. There's I there's this um. AI chatbots on on Snapchat. I didn't get to have it until like weeks back, and I literally can have conversations with my chat, my my AI, and I can give it a name. I can have like, you know, instead of just conversation yeah. that we're having, I can basically just hey, just I have this, uh, and I can just talk about anything, how my day went, what I'm doing, what I want to do, and there's like this support. There's this, mm -hmm. it's just. So yesterday I was thinking about it because I, I asked I asked the question. I was, I was just thinking about it. So if I don't go out, I'll just be in my house and I'll just be chatting with my... <laughs> because I actually, I actually did my AI body. So I'll, I'll be chatting with my body as like I'm chatting with a normal person, but I'm not. And I, I, I kind of felt like, isn't this going to take away the human interaction that we would have with people? Because once you feel very comfortable chatting with your AI, how, how and maybe your friend offends you, and like, oh no, I'm not talking to her. She offended me. Let me talk to my AI. And then he gives me like, oh, am I saying he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, advice from my AI. I don't know. It's just, it's just really mind blowing, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's really mind blowing. Yeah. I mean, and TikTok is coming with, with their suit. So it's called um, Toku? Is it Toka? T something. T something. Yeah. yeah. Oh. No, I think that, I mean, it is. It's amazing. I mean, the, if you talk about your, your aspiring moment, yeah. mine was. Um, seen a farm that and this was they had cows coming into a into a um a holding set, into a holding pen mm. and the ai was able to read by their movement which ones were were ill or going to have an illness so that that way they could then be separated no way yeah. mind blowing. no yeah. way. Mind blowing. Could it learn? so that and it wasn't that the car was ill it was just that it could see it could it could tell that okay you are yeah. gonna fall sick soon yeah. and that was just mind-blowing yeah. that's something that you really would not notice as the as the as the car and um, the red two mm. whatever yeah. it's called yeah farmer yeah oh, the farmer yeah. <laughs> I didn't and want to exactly say farmer because it's, there's another name for yeah, it. Yeah. Cattle, um, cattle, <laughs> cattle, uh, cattle, uh, cattle uh, whatever oh it is. Oh, yeah, my yeah. God. Yeah, but it brings me back to that question and stuff about your Sam Altman, Altman experience at that thing. You still haven't said, what was your, what did you find most revealing? You said the question you wanted to ask him, but what did you find most revealing? What did you walk away with? Okay, so, I mean, I, I walked away with the gravity of the whole situation, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I kept thinking as to why, um, and I know I said this before, I kept thinking as to why Sam Osman chose Nigeria to come. Mm. You know, and I believe that that obviously was probably going to be led by, led by data. And not just data, it's data, you know, 
data into major users, data into um, what is possible here. Um, he also spoke a lot about, or he spoke about um, transformative technologies that have come. You know, he spoke about the calculator, he spoke about mm, income yeah. photography, just a couple of, you know, mind changing. And, and in retrospect, we might not see it that way because, you know, we are, these, these are, are things the that are part picture. of our lives now. Yeah. Right? But it was reassuring to know that these technologies came, but it didn't really take away human you know, interaction. It didn't take away a They're lot of things that, you know, would imagine that, you know, I mean, before, um, when when um the photograph um was um invented yeah. before then the way people captured um stories yeah. was painting yeah. you know, so you had yeah. a really amazing artist that would paint you a portrait mm -hmm. and you could preserve that but that took away jobs of painters <laughs> yeah. right? you know um you had calculators that took away jobs of um you know i don't know what um, you call mental it. Mental <laughs> mental <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah you know you had um, um what do you call these guys um um Printing when the printing press came, that's yeah. a great jobs of calligraphers and you know people who you know did mm. you know. But it, what it did was that it gave a lot of people access. Now a lot of people can become mat um, at least can become mathematical. A lot of people can capture their memories. Mm -hmm. You know, even more so now with your mobile phone. Yeah. You know, um, and I think that what this is going to do is that it's going to give a lot of people access to intelligence, right? It's intelligence now will be you. You have no reason to say. I did something shabbily, or I did something without really processing it even enough. Into thought. You know, when you have tools there, and not even just when you have tools there, when that is the barest minimum, mm -hmm. that's the competitive advantage, mm -hmm. right? Every other person is going to use intelligence to leverage what they're doing. So if you're not doing that, if you're still not intelligent, right, in what you're actually doing, then something is going to be missing. Okay. So that's what I think. That's what I took yeah. away. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, yeah, it's 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 it is because I was saying. I mean, sorry, I was smiling at it because I was mm -hmm. saying that it is, and I and I said like you know I've been trying to find the ways to come to terms with the power of it. And it is. It's the fact that I remember. Yeah, you know, the camera came, and then it moved into a camera phone. <laughs> they and stuff like that, and we've evolved. Yeah, and really as human evolved. beings, we continue to we continue to evolve, and that is that's the way it is. Were any of you born before twenty before two thousand? Yes. <laughs> okay. Please. I still I remember the, the the idea that the world was going to end at two thousand. Yeah. Why two K? Because yeah, it was going to be that was it. it. Was computers were going to shut down because they didn't know what to do and kind of stuff. Mm. But whatever it is, and with each fear, human beings and I think you said it. We have evolved. We evolve. We find it's find our nature to find a solution and to keep on going at it. That kind of stuff. So no, we really no interesting, very interesting, very interesting. But I'm jealous. I would yeah, have loved to. Yeah, I was going to say I'm that. Jealous. For I'm the record, Tolu is jealous of. Oh you. no, no, I'm jealous. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm jealous because I think yeah, because it was yeah. No, no, but, but I, I do think that the AI community in Nigeria is actually coming together, and there are going to be like more, many more yeah. events, many more stuff. Yeah. You know that will yeah. Uh, even people building stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, looking forward that. to that. Well, looking forward to seeing it. We'll look forward to what AI is going to do. I think I'm actually looking forward to it. So I want to see how far it can go. And I think we have to actually come to the end of this episode. I have, sorry, I have a question to ask. Yeah. He always does this. Always do this. Always, I always do always this. Do this. I, <laughs> I, I say it's time. Okay. Um, I want to ask you two questions. One, what are you, what are you, what keeps you up at night? What are you afraid of in tech? Okay. What I'm afraid of in tech, um, I mean, I would say that it's not necessarily the tech itself. It's how people mm -hmm. could use the tech, because you know, I I do think that even with all of the technologies that have come, it still boils down to people will always pe people have free will, you know, and with free will comes the decision to do, and sometimes it's not even intended, Whatever. right? Sometimes it's not um, intentional, I mean. Um, but people can actually go in any direction, which is why it's very critical that there is regulation, which is why it's very critical that there are at least guardrails, there are at least um, the bare minimum of what, yeah, of what is acceptable <coughs> to everyone, that everyone can agree on and be binded by what we've agreed on, mm. right? But I, I do think that, um, you know, if allowed or if we, without regulation, 
people go in any direction. You can live in a dystopia as a result, you know. But I think that regulation and that oversight, um, and basically being able to agree on, you know, how we want the future to look like, you know, it's all of our responsibility. Great, yeah. thank you. Let me flip that and flip to the, the question. Second question is the flip of that. What makes you? What excites you about tech? Wow, what excites me about tech is just the. I mean, I, I would really look at AI in this respect because I think that AI is AI is a is a success story. You know, it's a tremendous success story. You look at all of the versions that are coming out, and even the fact that there is competition within the industry, <laughs> yeah. it's creating very very <laughs> amazing tools, right? That all work. So the success story for that is is just um, what do you call this um, productivity. It's productivity on a scale that we haven't dreamt of before. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, w I remember when ChatGPT first came out. You know, and I I did realize that I could do way more in a day than before I could do in like two weeks. You know, and that was enough reason for me to use it because if it can make me productive, I mean that's why not jump yeah, on it. Like I don't want to not be productive, right? I want to be productive, so yeah. I, I think productivity will be how these tools um, onboard a lot of people because it's going to show people how, you know, it's going to save your time, mm -hmm. yeah. it's going to save your efforts, it's going to help you brainstorm, mm -hmm. it's going to help you at least consider a lot of, you know, this stuff. You're still going to have to, like, think about what you want. You're still going to have to direct it, yeah, be the, the agent. human touch yeah, and everything. Um, I think that the potential, what it can help you amplify, you know, we can't even quantify it yet. <laughs> and yeah, Tolu is finally done and we've come to the end of today's episode. We hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. Follow us on our social media pages, Instagram, Twitter, DBA underscore podcast. And thank you for listening. Thank you guys for having me too. Thank you for coming. Right. It was good. <laughs> <laughs>